Hello and welcome to the session on probability. We'll talk about the basics of probability, the AND and OR cases. We'll also discuss some special cases, conditional probability and odds. Now, to begin with, what exactly is probability? Probability of an event is defined as number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. The point to note here is that the favorable outcomes that you are considering or the total outcomes that you are considering, you cannot consider these randomly. You have to consider comparable outcomes, the outcomes which are equally likely in nature. For example, a very basic example would be, what is the probability of getting a 3 when you throw a dice? The probability, as you might realize, one favorable outcome, getting a 3, total number of outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. All these are possible on the throw of a dice. So the probability comes out as 1 by 6. An incorrect way of taking the outcome would be, let's say you take favorable way, getting a 3, unfavorable way, not getting a 3. So total ways are 2. That is incorrect. You cannot consider whatever you like. You have to consider outcomes which are equally likely in nature. That is why probability of getting a 3 on a dice on a throw of a dice is 1 by 6. Your standard formula for sets of A union B works in case of probability as well. It says probability of A union B is probability of A, probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. If you want to look at it in words, the probability of the event A happening or the event B happening, any one of them happening is what? It is the probability of the event A plus the probability of event B minus you remove the ones in which both of them happen. Why? Because both of them happening got covered when A happened, both of them happening got covered when B happened. Now, to understand the case of AND and OR, what do you need to do? Well, let us look at an example. A and B are doing target practice. Probability of A hitting a target is 1 by 3 and B hitting a target is half. What is the probability that both of them will, will hit the target? To understand it simply, let's say A and B are shooting at a target. Now, when will both of them hit the target? In one third of the cases, A hits the target. In half of the cases, B hits the target. So in what portion, what fraction of the cases will both of them hit? If you first consider just A's cases, A hits in one third. Out of those one third, B will hit in half of them. So overall, they will hit in one by six of the cases, which is simply nothing else but the multiplication of the two values. In case of, let's look at another example. If A and B are running in a race, probability of A winning is one by three, B winning is half. Now, in a race, if two people are running, is it possible that both of them win? I'm not considering a tie case. So is it possible that both of them win? No. So then what is the probability that either of them will win the race? Well, either A will win the race, he can, he will win the race in one third of the cases, or B will win the race, he will win the race in half of the cases, or it will be one by three plus one by two, which comes out as five by six. Moving on to special cases in probability. Now, we need to know first of all, what are complementary events? Let's say A hitting a target is an event, then its complementary event would be A missing the target. If probability of A passing an exam is three by five, then probability of A failing the exam is two by five, and these are complementary events. As you might have realized, in case of complementary events, probability of the event plus the probability of its complement will always be equal to one. Now, what are exhaustive events? Exhaustive events are those which cover all the entire gamut of possibilities. Let's say there are seven people in a race and probability of A winning is given to you, B winning is given to you. And someone asks you, what is the probability of A union, B union, C union, D union, E union, F union, G? That is, what is the probability that at least one of them will win the race? Or one of them will win the race, not at least, but one of them will win the race. Well, if seven people are running, one of them has to win the race. So such events are exhaustive events and probability of 
the union of all of them will again come out as one. What are exclusive events? Uh, if you have seen news reports, uh, very often you would have seen that there is a ticker going on, exclusive news report by NDTV or something like that. What it means is that particular footage, what they are showing is only available with them. It is not there with anyone else. The same concept can be applied in case of probability, in case of exclusive events. What exclusive events mean is that anything which is happening in A is not happening in B. Again, the race example fits here because if A wins the race, B cannot. If B wins the race, C, A cannot win the race. So their intersection or both of them happening together, the probability of that is going to be zero. And in such a case, as you might have realized from the original formula, probability of A union B will simply be probability of A plus probability of B because there is no intersection part. This case, the race case that we discussed was the case of mutually exclusive. That is why probability of either of them winning A union B was simply the addition of the two values. Now, what are independent events? Independent events are those in which there is no connection between the events. If A is winning, B does not matter. If A hits the target, it does not matter to B. It has no significance on B. An example of independent events would be the first case that we are taken here. A and B are hitting the target. Probability of A hitting is 1 by 3, B hitting is half. Now to B, it does not matter whether A has hit or not hit. So in such cases, probability of A intersection B comes out as probability of A into probability of B. That's it. Pure and simple multiplication of the values. Which modifies the formula for A union B as probability of A plus probability of B. Instead of minus probability of A intersection B, you can write probability of A into probability of B. Another concept which comes into the picture is of binomial probability. To understand this, let us say you imagine that you are tossing a coin. Now, when you are tossing a coin for 100 times, is it possible that all 100s are edges? It is highly unlikely, but it is possible. What will be the probability of getting all 100 heads? First head, half. Second head, half. Third head, half. Fourth head, half. I hope you get the drift. Hundredth head probability will also be half. All these are independent events. All of them are happening at the same time. So it will simply be half into half into half into half hundred times or it would be half to the power of hundred. But if I change the question to what is the probability that in hundred tosses there will be 75 tails. Now what are you going to do? Well, one thing that you will have to do is since it is half for a tail, this needs to happen 75 times. Also, the other 25 times you need to get a head. So that is half to the power of 25. But is your question complete? Or rather, is your solution complete? Is your answer just simply this value? No, it is not. Your answer is going to be 100 C 75 into these values. Why, have, why do I need to do this 100 C 75? Because of the simple reason you need to select 75 times those 75 cases where you will get a tail. It cannot be any 75. You have to pick them. And in 100 trials, in how many ways can you pick those 75 ways? You can pick those 75 ways in 100 C 75 ways. That is the reason for this formula that in N attempts, what is the probability that which normally is P will occur R times. So first of all, from n attempts, you have to select those r attempts, which you can do in n c r ways. P is the probability of happening once. Happening r times is p to the power r, but your question is not complete. In the other n minus r times, p should not happen. What is the probability of that? That is 1 minus p to the power of n minus r. So if in this question, if instead of 100 tosses, it was 10 tosses and the question said, what is the probability of seven tails? What will change in your question? First, from the 10 tosses, you will need to select the seven tosses for tails, then half to the power seven for getting those seven tails, and then half to the power three 
for getting the remaining heads. Now, let us look at a slightly more complicated question which says, what is the probability of getting more heads than tails? Well, simply put, first thing that you will need to find out is what is the probability of getting an equal number of heads and tails? So that means you get 50 heads and 50 tails. You can get that in 100 C50 into half to the power of 50 and half to the power of 50, which becomes half to the power of 100. So this, what I have written here, is the probability of getting an equal number of heads and tails. So what is the probability of getting an unequal number? Well, if from 1, you remove the probability of an equal number, what do you get? You get the probability of getting an unequal number of head and tails. Now, this, what I have written here, represents the probability of getting an unequal number. In half of these cases, there will be more heads. In half of these cases, there will be more tails. What do I need to find out? When, what is the probability of getting more heads? Well, half of these cases will have more heads. And so my answer is simply half into 1 minus 100 C50 and half to the power of 100. What is half to the power of 100? 100 C50 half to the power of 100. This portion, the last part, let me just highlight it. Yeah, this is the probability of getting an equal number of head and tails. This, what is inside the bracket, is the probability of getting an unequal number of head and tails. In half of those cases, heads will be more than the number of tails. Moving on to the questions of conditional probability. What exactly is conditional probability? Well, let's say if you are given, what is the probability of event A happening given that B has already occurred? So what will it be? Well, if B has already occurred, my entire sample space is now just this pink, purple, pink portion, which is of B. What are my favorable ways? A should happen. So A intersection B are my favorable ways. So what will be the probability? Probability of A intersection B by PB. Let us look at the reverse. What is the probability of event B happening given that A has already occurred? Now, my total sample space or total outcome becomes probability of A. Favorable outcomes become probability of A intersection B. And probability of B given that A has already occurred is probability of A intersection B by PA. Another concept but which is not very frequently asked is the case of odds. What do odds mean? You might have seen these betting odds in paper. Well, odds just mean that it is the number of odds in favor means number of favorable outcomes by number of unfavorable outcomes. So let's say the odds of India winning a match are given to you as 7 is to 3. So that's me. Odds of India winning in favor are given as 7 is to 3. So that means that India will win 7 matches and lose 3 matches. So what is the probability of India winning? It is not 7 by 3. It is 7 by 10. What is the probability of India losing? It is 3 by 10. Odds against is just the reciprocal of this. It is number of unfavorable outcomes by number of favorable outcomes. Let's say odds against Spain winning the next World Cup are 3 by 5. So what does that mean? There are 3 chances that Spain will not win and 5 chances that Spain will win. So what is the probability of Spain winning? It will be favorable chances 5 by total 3 plus 5 or 5 by 8. If you want to look at it in terms of probability, odds in favor are simply probability of A by probability of A complement, whereas odds against are probability of A complement by probability of A. With this, I'd like to wrap up this session on probability. Please provide feedback via Twitter or via Gmail at my mail ID, which is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you.